This is Morgan. You almost ran over my toes. <laughs> no, you didn't. You know what you're doing. So Morgan, um, if you see the little signal on her forehead, she, there's a keyboard, and she actually typed out her own testimony, shared how Jesus changed her life, and so this piece of equipment then translates that into a human voice for her to share. So we're so grateful to hear your story today. Morgan is 22, and uh, why don't you share how Jesus has changed your life? Hey, 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 everyone. As you guys probably know, my name is Morgan Smoker, also known as the Speed Queen. I grew up with two amazing parents, two sisters, and a brother. Also, I have a sister in heaven. I have an amazing boyfriend who loves me unconditionally. I attended the Worship Center Church when I was a little girl, and now I am a photographer on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for young adults. Let me first tell you about my disorder. I was born with a disorder called gluteric acidemia, and I have been in a wheelchair since I was two. I am not able to walk, talk, or control my hands, and yet I am the happiest person. Let me tell you a little secret about me. When my communication device is not working, I can draw out letters with my head and my cousin is good at understanding me. Also, Peyton is good too. I have learned to enjoy this life I've been given and to live it to the fullest. I am a strong Christian who loves the Lord with all of my heart. I love to praise the Lord. He did everything for us and I am so thankful for that. When I was 15, I sensed the Lord knocking on my heart. After that, I decided to get baptized, and I am so glad I did. It was the best decision that I ever made. I have been told that I have the most faithful heart and the beautiful spirit. People tell me that when I smile at them, they can see the Holy Spirit in me. I am also a very caring person. Sometimes I am down, but I keep reminding myself that the Holy Spirit is inside of me and will lift me back up. I stay positive because being negative all the time doesn't help anything. It wasn't always that way. In 2014, when I was in middle school, my life slowly drifted away from God even up until my high school years. I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to live my life as I wanted to, not as God wanted me to. I had a very good friend from middle school through high school. We used to take pictures together and hang out. One day, our friendship ended with one stupid fight. I tried apologizing but she didn't listen. To this day, we still aren't friends, and I am okay with that because, Proverbs 18.24 says, Some friends may ruin you, but a real friend will be more loyal than a brother. Meanwhile, I had bad grades because I always cheated in classes. And yes, I was listening to the wrong music because my friends did. I just wanted to fit in, I had enough that separated me from them so I just wanted to be as much like them as possible. So why not? However, let's be real. Everyone wants to be popular, but was it worth it? No. We all know that we make mistakes and learn from them. I have made plenty of mistakes in my life. I regret these mistakes, but I know God uses our past to impact others' futures. When I was 14, I fell into the same trap a lot of teenagers do, pornography. I started watching these videos and it just seemed like a cool thing for teenagers to do. It was so easy for me to slip into that sin because my communication device is always right in front of me. By doing this, I was hurting God and myself. However, I didn't know any better so I kept doing it over and over again, night after night. This went on for four years. In October of 2017, in my senior year of high school, my favorite cousin Brooke asked me if I wanted to go to the living room at the worship center. When she asked me, she was looking at me and of course I didn't want to disappoint her so I said yes. 
I wasn't sure what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be just another church service. I remember that night like it was yesterday. I sat in the back shaking. Shannon, the pastor, was talking about pornography and declared get rid of pornography in Jesus' name. Pornography go. I knew right there that the message was for me. It was my first time coming, and somehow he knew exactly what I needed to hear. After that night I knew that I needed to let go of porn. It was hard at first but I kept saying no more porn, leave the darkness. To this day, I am freed from the strongholds of pornography, and I am so happy. Jesus saves us from our sins by his word, through which he calls sinners to repentance. Matthew 9:13. The psalmist says, God, sent his word and healed them. Psalm 107:20. Jesus' word frees us from the bondage of sin. Just remember that God knows what you are going through. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for us. Just throw it on him, and let him carry your burdens. Jesus said we could cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. There is nothing we are going through that we cannot cast on the Lord. I've seen God use trials to help build me back up, answer different prayers, open doors, help others, and I've seen many miracles. Miracles where I knew it could only be God who could make it happen. I have lots of great examples of him working in mysterious ways for sure. One day, when my communication device was having issues, the company said they didn't have a communication device for me. They apologized and said that they were all out, they were all loaned out. I was going to Florida the next day and I needed one. I prayed and asked others to pray. Somehow a device showed up at my house the next day. Another time, I was on the bus, and it was an ordinary day. I was on the bus minding my own business, and I kid you not, out of the corner of my eye, I saw an angel flying past the bus. To this day, I don't know if that was my sister in heaven watching over the bus or what, but it was pretty amazing. God is faithful our helper, our counselor, wonderful, mighty, peace, light of the world, healer, forgiver, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, the life, the resurrection. If you are facing the impossible today and you think there is no way out, you are definitely not alone. I remember when I said, why God, why this, and why that? God told me to wait for his timing. God has delivered me in the past, but when you are going through bad times, all you're thinking about is the present, the right now. But just keep reading the truth and that is the only way out. I once was broken, and now I'm free from my emotional bondage by the Holy Spirit.